SpaceX launched its first Starship rocket, complete with super heavy booster, from its starbase in Texas on April 20th, 2023. It wound up exploding in midair. But at the same time, it was deemed a successful launch. But how do we square that circle? So according to USA Today, shortly after SpaceX's, again, massive historic launch, because this is like the largest rocket ship launch, it's uh, 400 feet high. I think it's like as high or higher than the Statue of Liberty, for example. It successfully cleared liftoff, cleared the, the launching pad's tower that holds the rocket ship, which was the goal of the launch, but then broke apart and exploded in the air shortly after that. So the purpose of the mission, again, according to USA Today, was a test of the new rocket's ability to ignite and clear the pad's 500-foot tower, which was successful. However, several of the 33 Raptor engines failed to fire up as planned after three minutes into the flight, which then caused the Starship's upper stage and the Super Heavy booster to fail to separate. Now, apparently, there's something called a flight termination system aka FTS, and SpaceX did later confirm that the rocket's breakup was triggered by the FTS system, and this flight termination system is essentially explosives that are built in to key areas of the rocket, which are a safety and licensing requirement, and the purpose of them is to automatically trigger if any hardware failures are detected. And that is apparently the case of what happened here, but not before completing that first initial successful leg of the mission and gathering the data that they set out to gather. And I have heard Elon Musk say in interviews in the past that, you know, rocket ships explode all the time. It's part of that entire engineering process. And that each time you get a certain amount of data from these experimental uh, flights and takeoffs that you set out to retrieve and use that information to make your next launch that much better. And the next launch for Starship, according to SpaceX, will be in a couple of months. So definitely stay tuned for that. And I've definitely spoken about SpaceX in the past and how they really innovated this awe-inspiring rocket company space and took it from being just a government industry to now having this privatized sector of it, which has led to much faster innovation and competition with subsequent companies, private companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, etc., with SpaceX being the pioneer in that private space and paving the way. But I wanted to highlight this stat that I thought was worth sharing because I knew SpaceX was like the first in that realm of uh, private rocket ship companies. And because of them, we were able to send American astronauts back to the International Space Station, launched from American soil for the first time in decades and have since multiple times which I covered here in a previous episode of the podcast, but I, again, didn't know how much further along they were than the other companies in the space. And this stat definitely highlights that and I wanted to share with you guys. So SpaceX has in a successful launch every, on average, every two weeks or so, whether it be, again, taking folks to the space station, taking up supplies, taking up satellites for different companies, including the Starlink satellites that Elon has been taken up to space for years to ultimately offer high-speed internet around the world, especially in um, like internet deserts in remote and rural areas where you know you're not getting cable, for example. But SpaceX has done more successful launches than every other private company that exists, plus the country of Russia combined, which I thought was pretty sick. Like I knew they were ahead, but I didn't know how far how much further ahead they were and that kind of puts that in perspective so shout out to spacex continue doing what you guys are doing and real quick speaking of space completely unrelated to spacex itself but i'm going to be featuring a podcast as the podcast of the week in my newsletter spun today.com forward slash subscribe which you can subscribe to for free where every week I feature a podcast of the week 
that I recommend for folks to listen to, as well as uh, a few other things. So definitely check it out. Sponsoday.com forward slash subscribe if you want to check it out. But it's going to be featured in, in a week or two. And it's from the Rethinking podcast where they interviewed sci-fi writer Andy Weir, who wrote The Martian. And I just wanted to share a tidbit about his story real quick. And my fellow writers out there will definitely appreciate this. He started writing on the side. It's something that he always enjoyed doing. He had a, a website, a blog, where he would post like serialized fiction. He would add, you know, like a chapter at a time to his website for different stories that he wrote. And it was a, a passion, a side project of his, if you will. Well, he had a fairly successful nine to five in computer programming and as a software engineer, not dissimilar from Steven Spielberg's father, which we were speaking about earlier. But one of the stories that he wrote on his website was The Martian. And he said in this episode of the Rethinking Podcast that he had about 3,000-ish visitors to his website, like at its peak. And this was one of his more popular stories. You know, he had a, a really good job. He worked for companies like AOL and I think different video game companies as well. And he was like 25 years into his career. And the story of the Martian that he put on his website gate was fairly popular with with you know, his 3,000-ish visitors at its peak to his website. So he decided to self-publish it as a book and did so, did so on Amazon, as we do, as self-published authors, you know, Amazon, Kindle, etc. And it started gaining momentum and selling well on there. And that success, uh, or the success of the book there, rather, got the attention of Random House, the big uh, publishing house, and offered him a deal, obviously, to publish The Martian, which they did. That did fairly well and that got the attention of director Ridley Scott which then turned into the film deal to turn his book his story The Martian into the blockbuster hit that we know today starring Matt Damon Matt Damon and I love Matt Damon but thanks to Team America I can never say his name without doing that (laughs) but anyway I just thought that was a dope inspiring part of Andy Weir's story that he shared on that podcast. And again, I will share with you guys within my absolutely free weekly newsletter that you can subscribe to right now at sponsor.com forward slash subscribe. 